on, young people. Bless the king. Hallelujah. Tell them. Tell them, God says, even now, the struggle is over. Tell them, you've been in this place long enough. Tell them, tell them. And I know your mountainside has been rough. We came to declare that the struggle Just one more time. You can just tell your neighbor, wherever you are, whatever you've been going through, say, wherever you are. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wherever you've been going through. God says it. God says it. God says it. The struggle is over. Tell them, you've been in that place long enough, say it. But y'all, the struggle is over. reading from the first through the 16th verses. Amen? Amen. So let us, let us stand uh, for the reading of the word. Amen? 
Uh, amen. Amen. We stand for the reading. We want to give reverence to God's Word. And uh, I do have some more Bibles in my car. And, uh, and so the next week we'll bring them out. We have some more Bibles and some hymn, hymnals. And uh, we want to be able to follow along uh, when the Word of God uh, is being read. Amen. Amen. Now there wa was a certain man of Ramath Themo Simhim of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Joroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tuhu, the son of Zuf, an Ephraimite, and he had two wives. The name of one was Hannah, the name of the other was Penina, and Penina had children, but Hannah had no children, and this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. And the two, and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Peninus, the priests of the Lord, were there. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave to Penina, his wife, and to all her sons and her daughters, portions. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb. And her adversary also provoked her sore, for to make her fret because the Lord had shut up her womb. And as he did so year by year, when he went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her, therefore she wept and did not eat. Then Elkanah, her husband, to her husband, then said Elkanah, her husband, to her, Hannah, why uh, weepest thou? And why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am I not better to thee than ten sons? So Hannah rose up, rose up, and after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk, now Eli, Eli the priest sat upon a seat by the post of the temple of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul, and prayed unto the Lord, and wept sore. And she vowed a vow, and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou will indeed look upon the affliction of thine handmaiden, and remember me, and not forget thine handmaiden, but will give unto thine handmaiden a man-child, then I will give unto him, unto the Lord, all the days of his life. And there shall no razor come upon his head. And it came to pass, as she continued praying before the Lord, that Eli marked her mouth. Now Hannah, Hannah, she spake in her heart. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she had been drunken. And Eli said unto her, Now, how long wilt thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from, from thee. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have not drunken neither nor drunk. I have not drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not thine handmaiden for a daughter of Baal, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken here too. So reads the word of God. You may take your seat uh, in the presence of the Lord. Amen. And I want to talk to you to that today from the title of this theme, Amen. How to turn your bad situation into a blessing. How to turn your bad situation into a blessing. Are you going to pray uh, with us today? Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, 
what what to do when you are in a bad situation. What to do when you are in a bad situation. And let me say that it's very important when we are going through a bad situation that we take a realistic appraisal of that situation. In other words, we need to analyze uh, Sister Twine and figure out what's going on with us. Amen? But we also need to re-examine our actions that has caused us to be in a bad situation. Amen. So it's important that we take a realistic appraisal of our situation and that we re-examine uh, my actions that has caused me to be in the situation. But then it's also important that uh, we re 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 redirect, amen, ourselves and we resolve and take whatever necessary steps, Sister Twine, that is required to resolve the activity or to resolve a bad situation. Have I got a witness? Amen. Amen. In other words, we want to re redirect ourselves. If we realize what it is that we're doing that has caused us to be in a bad situation, then we want to redirect ourselves, amen, and resolve to take whatever required activity it is to resolve our situation. Now, we want to look at Hannah, and we want to see uh, the kind of situation that Hannah was in. Are you with me? We want to look at verse, uh, verse 2. It says, And he had two wives, the name of one was Hannah, and the name of the other was Penina. Now there it is, he, he, she, she was in a bad relationship, amen, because she was in a relationship with a, with a husband that had two wives, and, and she was one of the, she was the other woman, if you will, amen, and that's a bad situation, because God said that uh, a man uh, uh, should have one wife. Not two wives, but one wife. <laughs> Hallelujah to the Lamb. And then the other problem was, as we look at verse 5 and 6, uh, uh, that she uh, was barren. Amen. Uh, that was a bad situation because she wanted to have kids. And the Bible specifically said that the Lord huh, had shut up her womb. Isn't that something? Now, it wasn't some medical condition that she had, uh, and she wasn't of old, her, she was not that old in terms of age that has caused her to be able to not have kids, uh, like in the case of, uh, of uh, Sarah, uh, she, she perhaps was of a young, younger, uh, a young woman. But she had, was not able to have kids because the Bible clearly said that God had shut up her womb. And then when we look at verse uh, 6 through 8, uh, not only that she was in a bad relationship, she was barren, but she was belighted by her, uh, her, her the other wife of, of, of her husband, amen, of Elkanah. In other words, Penina used to tease her all the time. Now, can you imagine that? You you are already in a bad relationship, and then the other wife uh, just pours piles it on you, you know. Said, oh, no, you ain't no good, you can't have kids, you this, you that, huh? And, and, and so she was being blighted, good God Almighty, day and night by the other wife, Peninas. Can you imagine that? So we recognize that she was in a bad situation. But not only that, uh, uh, she was in bitterness of soul. You know, you know, you can you imagine can't have kids, you're in a bad relationship with, a, with another man, and you have another wife. Uh, you, you, and you get teased every day, you, you know what I'm saying? And so that caused her to have bitterness, good Lord of mine, bitterness of soul. And then uh, uh, the good news is that she decided that she was going to go to the temple because she believed in the blessing of the Lord. Let's look at verse uh, 11 there. And it says, And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look upon the affliction of thine handmaiden, and remember me, and not forget thine handmaiden, but will give unto thine handmaiden a child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. And so she went to the temple, and she started praying, Sister, 
Sister Twine, she discovered, Cheryl, that she wanted to turn her situation around. She believed in the blessing of the Lord. And you know, it's so sad as she went to the temple, the priest accused her of being blasted. Good God Almighty. <laughs> of being drunk, Sister Twine. She said, look here, why you come up in here drunk? And so she had to defend herself and tell the priest, look, I have not drinking wine, no, I have drink, not drinking any strong drink, but I have basically been pouring myself out, pouring my soul out to the Lord. Are you with me, beloved? And so she uh, went to the temple, couldn't even get a break in the temple. You know, you think sometimes you leave the house and you go to church and, and you're going to be blessed. But here we find that she was being blasted even by the priest. Good God Almighty. That was a bad situation. And then uh, uh, the seventh thing we see here is that she was bereaved of spirit. In other words, she was grieved. Her spirit was grieved because everywhere she turned, she could not get any rest or relief or she just could not relax. Even in her home, even in the church, she could not relax. Have I got a witness? Yeah. And then, uh, and then uh, finally she had to defend herself again. She told the priest, hey, look, I am not drunk, and I am not a daughter of Baal. Good God Almighty. He said, count me not. Don't think that I am a daughter of Baal. But you know what? Every now and then, when we face bad situations, after we would have taken a realistic appraisal of ourselves, when we would have reexamined our situation, when we re redirect ourselves and we resolve to take whatever required activity it is to resolve our situation, we need to, we need to get up. Amen. We need to get up. We need to get up off, off our prayer, out of our prayer closet, and we need to do whatever is necessary. Now, you notice what she did, Sister Twine? She decided that she was going to get her some food. Amen. She, the Bible says she ate. And she pulled herself together. Amen. Uh, uh, she put some makeup on. Amen. She started to dress herself, and she started to do some things that would help her to turn her situation around. Because I want you to know that God is persistent in solving our problems. He wants to solve our problems, and He wants to solve our situations. Amen. Amen. God wants to do that. And then God has the power. We've got to believe this. Not only that God is persistent in solving our problems, but God has the power to provide all that is needed in order for us to solve our problems or our bad situations. Have I got a witness? Amen. And God is persistent in getting us to the place that is more peaceful and more productive that would help us to come out of our problems. Amen. I, I really believe that. Amen. I really believe that, Sister Twine, that God is persistent. Amen. In getting us to a peaceful place where we can solve our problems or get out of our situation. And I want to quickly share with you four things that Hannah did that allowed her to turn her situation around. Let's look at verse 10, if you will. The verse says, And she was in bitterness of soul, and prayed unto the Lord, and wept sore. The key portion in that passage is, is that she prayed to the Lord. Have I got a witness? And I want to say to you that whatever you're going through, whatever your problem is, we've got to pray to the Lord. Because God hears, uh, Brother Nicholas, God hears and he will answer our prayer. The Bible is replete with passages of scripture that encourages us to pray. Uh, in, in Matthew's gospel, the word says, watch and pray. Amen. Uh, for the spirit indeed is willing and the flesh is weak. But the idea is that we ought to pray. Jesus said in Luke 18 and 1 that man ought to always pray and not faint. Uh, 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 Thessalonians teaches us that we ought to pray without ceasing. And James teaches us that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man, and I would like to add the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous woman, amen, avail it much. And so we've got to pray. Whatever our bad situation is, God is able to help us if we pray. Amen. Uh, and
And so we've got to pray, amen. My, one of my favorite passages of Scripture, Sister Twine, is uh, 2 Chronicles 7, 14, which says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and do what? Pray. Uh, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. And so we've got to pray. And when we pray, God will deliver us out of our bad situation. Hallelujah to the land. God did deliver Hannah out of his bad situation because God opened up her womb and blessed her with a child. Amen. And her name, his name, uh, she named him Samuel. As a matter of fact, God subsequently blessed her with many more children, about seven children, after God had shut up her womb. And so I want to say to you that if God brings you to it, hmm. he's capable of taking you through it. Amen. Yeah. And if God is in it, hmm. then there is a, a no limit. Hallelujah to the Lamb. But not only that she prayed, she, uh, verse uh, 11 says that she paid her vows. In other words, when we make a commitment to the Lord, if we say we're going to do something, yeah. then we ought to follow through and make sure we do that. Yeah. Amen. Uh, whatever commitment we make, we, if we say we're going to do something, and if we commit ourselves to saying we're going to do it, then we ought to do it. Yeah. Amen. We ought to pay our vow because the Bible teaches us that it is bad for us to make a vow and we don't pay it. And so we see that she was doing that which was required. Amen. This was, she not only took a realistic appraisal of, our, of herself, but she did that which was the required activity to turn her situation around. She paid her vow. But then verse 3, a uh, uh, third thing we want to say is that she poured out her soul unto the Lord. Let, let, let's, let's look at uh, uh, verse uh, uh, 15. It says, And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. You know, sometimes when we're going through in life situations, we've got to become serious about saturating ourselves with serious supplication to our Savior. We've got to pour out our soul. Somebody ought to say amen. Pour out our soul. Literally, just go before God and say, Lord, bless me. I need a blessing from you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. She was pouring out. Her, she had no shame about it, Sister Twine. She had no shame about it, Cheryl. She was just going forth and pouring out her soul onto the Lord. And I want to encourage you. If you want to turn your situation around, it's not in the liquor bottle. It's not in Mary Jane. It's, it's not in the cocaine. Uh, we found that out just recently. Uh, and it's not in the heroin. Uh, uh, with, with the brother Seymour, amen, that just uh, just lost his life, uh, who was uh, who had the heroin in his arm, found a needle in his arm. It, that stuff gives you no help. It gives you no peace. But we pour out ourselves, amen. We saturate ourselves with serious supplication to our Savior. And that is the thing that is going to make a difference in our lives. But as we come to our close, the fourth thing was she... Uh, she turned her pain into praise. Have I got a witness? Yeah. Amen. In other words, she said, look, I'm not going to worry about this man. I'm not going to worry about any of this stuff. I'm just going to praise the Lord. And I want you to know that praise is the antidote for adversity. In other words, when you are going through a situation, you don't want to get drunk, you don't want to get tore up from the floor up, you basically want to turn your situation through praise. Don't you remember, uh, Joseph turned his situation around. Amen. Job turned his situation around. Jonah turned his situation around. And we know Jesus turned his situation around. Daniel in the lion's den turned his situation around. Paul and Silas Turned their situation around. It was at midnight and Paul and Silas, uh, they were in the prison and, 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 and initially they were down, Sister, Sister Twine, they were a little depressed, discouraged, despondent, full of disillusion and despair, but they decided to have a praise service right up in the prison. And God sent an earthquake, hallelujah, I feel my help now, God sent an earthquake up in that prison. And they were released out of that prison. Good God Almighty. We're told of the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. God turned their situation around. And God is capable. 
God is able to turn our situation around. We want to get caught up in praise. Because when praise go up, blessings will come down. Hallelujah to the Lamb. When praise go up, blessing comes down. I want to encourage you to get caught up in praise. Because praise is the antidote for adversity. David said, uh, I will bless the Lord at all times. huh? And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Not bad words be in your mouth, but praise words be in your mouth. You know, some folks, uh, when you hear them talk, good God Almighty, uh, you hear nothing but bad Christian folk too. Uh, nothing but bad words come out of their mouth, Brother Nicholas. But I want you to know that God wants to have us bring, bring praise. Out of our mouth. That's what David said. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and delivered him out of all his troubles. And that's what God will do for us when we turn our painful situation into praise. I remember again some years ago when I was having trouble on my, uh, one of my jobs that I decided that I was going to get caught up in praise. That I was not going to worry, I was not going to uh, get down and depressed and discouraged. And when I returned to my job, not only did I got a promotion, but I got a pay raise. <laughs> because God worked it out. And God will work it out for us if we trust and obey. For that is the only way. God bless you today is our prayer. Amen. That is the word of the Lord uh, today. Amen. Amen. Praise God from whom all uh, blessings flow.